This is Electric XP3 e-bike review. And I'm Lisa from e-biking today. The new Electric XP is a folding electric bike currently priced at only $999. So the big questions are, is this inexpensive e-bike worth your money at all? And is it the right electric bike for you? In this video, I'm going to help you answer these questions and I'll tell you the pros and cons of the cool looking Electric XP3. Enjoy the ride. Electric gave me this e-bike for independent review, which is based on facts, features, and test rides, as well as my own opinions. For more e-bike reviews and helpful information, subscribe to the e-biking today channel and check below the video for details and links to help you make your e-bike buying decision be sure to leave a comment or question there as well. Now, as of this review, the Electric XP3 is priced at just $999. There's no doubt that it's a cheap e-bike as compared to other brands offering similar electric bikes for close to $1,500. So first, let's find out if this Electric XP is worth spending your money on. Here's what you'll get a choice of a step over frame in black or a step through frame like this one here. Both fold up to help you fit it in your car or in a little corner of your home. And it'll come in a box just like this. Even though Electric says it's fully assembled, the truth is, well, okay, it's about 97% put together. Honestly, this was the easiest e-bike I've ever put together making it the most fun, as in no stress. Just about anyone can insert the handlebars and turn the seat around. I'd buy this e-bike just because it's quick to put together and you can start riding right away. Okay, but seriously, after test riding for over three weeks, I've discovered the real pros and cons of the Electric XP3 electric bike. Here are the pros. And make sure to watch closely to see what I think is the coolest new feature of the Electric XP3. Okay, there's plenty of power that lets you take off fast. I mean like hold on to your seat fast. It's a 500 watt hub motor that peaks at 1000 watts and has 55 nanometers of torque. The Electric rides as a class three electric bike if desired meaning it can reach speeds of up to 28 miles per hour with pedal assist, whereas a class two can only reach 20 miles per hour before the motor cuts out. Just keep in mind that the XP3 will still only reach a top speed of 20 miles per hour using the twist throttle, as is the case on any electric bike. Another plus, five levels of pedal assist an adjustable speed controller and seven speed gears help dial in a comfortable speed and preserve battery life. Here's something else. Although there's nothing really special about the 48 volt 10.4 amp hour battery, the fact that I rode 12 miles over a few big hills without any noticeable loss of battery suggests that it can go far. According to Electric, the XP3 has a range of up to 45 miles using primarily Pedal Assist 1. Up to about 25 miles staying on Pedal Assist Level 3, or 20 miles tops using only throttle. One more thing I like about the battery is that it's integrated into the frame, so the bike looks pretty sleek and the battery is well protected from the elements. Another pro of the Electric XP3, the knobby 20 by three inch tires filled with slime. I've had a few flat tires and they are a huge pain. So I love that the tires handle light off-roading well and that a nasty thorn won't ruin my ride thanks to the slime. In case you're wondering, slime is a green liquid pumped into a bike tire that works by filling in a puncture automatically as your tire rotates. And the brakes are an improvement over the Electric XP 2.0. You now get disc brakes with 180 versus 160 millimeters of stopping power. 
Now, this next advantage might be obvious, but the fact that this e-bike folds easily is a huge plus. And I love that you can put it in your car without messing with an expensive bike rack. If you're a small person like me, you might still need some help lifting it. Okay, here it is, the super cool brand new feature of the Electric XP 3.0. You can take along a passenger. This is because the new integrated bike rack is literally welded on and rated to hold up to 150 pounds. You'll have to add the passenger seat, handlebar, and footrests, but then you're ready to go. It's a ton of fun, plus it's a great way to take someone with you on an errand or even to drop off an older child at school. And yes, passengers need to wear a helmet too. You can also set a passenger mode, which limits your max speed to 10 miles per hour so your second rider stays safe. Finally, you probably wanna know, is this e-bike comfortable? Yes, for a number of reasons. You'll sit comfortably upright and the new hand grips are soft and easy to grip. Now, I need to point out that the XP3 came with a free giant seat and suspension seat post along with some other cool extras. The oversized saddle, suspension seat post, and 50 millimeter hydraulic suspension fork definitely make this a comfortable ride, even on loose gravel and dirt. However, I can't speak to the redesigned sportier saddle originally included with the bike. And frankly, I'm still finding it hard to believe that an e-bike at this price point even has a suspension fork instead of a basic rigid fork. So make sure to see which goodies Electric is offering for free before making your buying decision. Now for the cons. You won't find top of the line components on this budget e-bike, but you will get a few name brand parts like Shimano that work just fine. The XP3 weighs 64 pounds, so it's fairly heavy, but it's really not heavier than many similar e-bikes, and it's actually a few pounds lighter than my old folding e-bike. That being said, a small con of the electric XP3 is its wimpy kickstand, which I'd prefer to be a bit larger to hold its weight. And honestly, it took me a little bit of time to adjust to how fast the XP3 takes off, especially from pedal assist level two or three. But now that I'm used to it, this burst of power is actually helpful when riding through city intersections. Finally, I didn't get a user's manual and I've heard others saying they didn't either, but Electric does have a manual online, which I've linked to in the description below so you won't have to search for it. Okay, those were the pros and cons. But here are the final details you should know before you buy. The Electric XP3 e-bike turns out to be an incredible value for the money. Most anyone can comfortably ride it, especially with a choice between a step over or step through model. But here's something you should know. There are a couple of other options to consider. There's also a long range XP 3.0 that offers 40% more range for around $200 more. With this, you'll ride up to 65 miles instead of only 45 miles. Then there's the electric XP Lite. It's $200 less than the XP 3. This folding e-bike might be perfect for you if you don't need to ride quite as far and want a really lightweight electric bike of just 46 pounds. Finally, the X Premium offers a lot more bike at a higher price than the XP3, but you'll get a mid-drive motor and dual battery that lets you ride up to 100 miles. Now, just between these electric bikes, it's clear that the electric XP3 offers the best value for the money. Just compare it to other electric bikes costing $200 to $500 more and you get pretty much everything you need for your daily commute or recreational ride. Hope you enjoyed my Electric XP3 e-bike review. Let's ride!